better business and a better life begin here. Welcome to Business is Art on True Chat with author and business consultant, John Umstead. Thank you for tuning in to Business is Art today. We are going to continue a discussion today uh, that we started a couple of weeks ago uh, in which we were talking about uh, asking the question, is your business viable or your business or your product, uh, are they viable? And we began that podcast uh, by asking uh, some a series of questions, but we had three basic categories, questions about you yourself, questions about your market, and questions about your business model. Now, in that particular episode, we only got through the questions about you. So to recap real quick, those questions are what type of entrepreneur are you? Are uh, who? Why are you here? Uh, and how determined are you? So with this episode, we're going to bust into some of the additional questions that you could that you should be asking yourself to determine if your uh, business or product is viable. But before we do, I would like to invite you all to connect with me, if you would, please find me on Twitter at John Umstead. Uh, go to my website, plancanvas.net. That's where you can find my software, Plan Canvas, or inquire about my consulting services. But I want to start a dialogue with you uh, about this show or about any other needs that you might have outside of the show. But speaking of this show, we're going to go back to a tried and true guest on the show. Uh, we began this conversation with Justin T. Weller, who is an entrepreneur. He is a co-founder of the True Chat Network, uh, as well as the producer of this particular show. So he is sitting in again as we continue through this series. Welcome back to the show, Justin. Always a joy to be here. And I've really enjoyed the conversation so far, so I'm excited to continue it. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's do get on with it then. Um, so again, it just gave you the recap. The next question, and this is around your market for your business, uh, is the big broad question, is there actually a market for it? Um, you know, it's kind of important to figure that out. And then, you know, the, the, the danger that entrepreneurs and inventors and, and that sort can get into creative types is they can, they can envision something and it really sounds great to them, but they fail to take a look at the market itself. Is there actually a market? for whatever it is that you're looking to do. And there's a whole series of questions that uh, we need to ask ourselves or ask ourselves uh, with regard to that. So there's questions like, you know, does it fill a need? Um, does it solve a problem? Does anyone want it? You know, maybe it solves a problem that no one cares to resolve, right? Yeah, it's either a problem that uh, that I don't want to solve <laughs> that I know I have, or it's a problem I didn't know I have that I don't care to solve. <laughs> right. And in either case, uh, it's hard to get people to want to fix something that they don't care to fix. Yeah, don't care. <laughs> and kind of a, an additional question there is, well, how much will anyone pay for it? Uh, and that's a big one. That can be a really tough one. So uh, let's come back to that one here in, in a moment um, because it can be it can be really tough to figure those things out. But some of the things that as you're answering these questions, you need to look at – uh, and consider um, is is you know is your business or product is it new you know is there anything else out there like it or is it genuinely unique and we all like to think hey what we're doing is unique and there's a difference between uniqueness and differentiators right and I and I I have to believe that most new business ideas or products uh, can have sometimes some pretty big differentiators but. There's not a whole lot new out there in the world. I think it's a difference too in, like you said, the way that we break it down. Because obviously there's lots of business consultants out there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you don't have a particular skill or talent to offer people. So it's it's sometimes not maybe that what you're doing is unique so much as how you do yep. what you do. Um, yeah, And there are businesses obviously where what you're doing is unique. Um, and then, of course, how you do it is unique by extension. But I don't think people have to feel bad if what they're doing isn't unique. And yeah. it's more about the process that they advocate or the way they achieve the goals right. are different. Because, um, I mean, that's a huge part of what business is. And a lot of times the people who have the first idea, you know, everybody goes to things like 
Facebook, but they also forget that Facebook wasn't the first. Right. You know? I mean, they definitely weren't the first social network. And really what they did is they took an idea and approved upon it. Mm-hmm. You know, They had their own thoughts about how it could be, right. but they built on – something that already existed and they were the, you know, they made something successful. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, it can be tough because in the entrepreneurs, both myself and others that I talk to, there's that, you know, pressure, I guess, societal pressure of, well, it's got to be something that no one else is doing. Right. You know, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's the way it has to be. No. And and I think, you know, this might be a good place for us to drill down with a couple of uh, our own specific examples. So I can talk a little bit about uh, consulting and, and tie plan canvas into that. And perhaps you can tie a little bit into uh, about true chat in there to give some real live examples, because, yeah, what, you know, I'm making a little commentary here. But one of my pet peeves about consultants of various types is they talk in these big general terms and, and it all makes sense. And like, yeah, yeah, right. But how do I apply that to what I'm doing? You know, <laughs> yes. How do I use it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and without specific examples, for me, it's very difficult to to implement whatever it is that's being suggested. So, so let's let's look at consulting, uh, my consulting particularly, and Plan Canvas as an example. So you're right. There, you know, there are thousands and thousands of consultants out there. Um, so how do I differentiate in that world? Because it's not that I'm doing anything. New consultants have been around forever, um, but I am doing some things differently, and that kind of makes my service a little bit unique. But it's it's less unique than it is just different. And there are some things that I've done to differentiate myself. So that really began with writing a book. I mean, the 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 primary original sole purpose really it wasn't even the primary. It was the sole purpose that I even conceived of writing a book was to define myself as a consultant and to differentiate myself from those others out there that are beating the streets that don't have a book. I could hold it up and say, here's my book, you know, here, I'll leave this behind, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect. And uh, it, g- it gave me some street creds that others can't compete with, right? Whether the book is good, bad, or indifferent. Um, the, another thing is this podcast. You know, I, I think I've mentioned on on the podcast. Well, I know I have mentioned on the podcast before that. You know, I get asked all the time how much direct business has having the podcast driven to me, and the answer is usually I don't know. Uh, probably none directly, but it is part of what makes me different than other consultants out there. I'm doing this podcast every week. I'm speaking with all kinds of experts, you know, to the point that you made a couple of weeks ago, expanding the network, learning from those people. And so it's something that other consultants don't have in their in their toolkit that I do, right? Um, the software itself is another thing that's in my toolkit that others don't have, even though Yes, I have the the software is commercially available and anyone could go subscribe to it. I have it in my consulting toolkit and I can take it out and sit down with my clients and say, okay, we're gonna we're going to no matter where you are in your business life cycle, we're going to start from the top. We're going to uh do some foundational work, talk about your vision, mission, purpose. We're gonna talk about your long term goals and objectives, we're gonna talk about your internal project, those strategic initiatives. And then once we've gone through some of that foundational work, then we're gonna talk about how you're going to tactically manage the business right now, and we'll go through some of those steps and talk about your sales and marketing plan and your operations plan, your staffing plan, your financial plans and all those sorts of things. And so none of that's new, right? None of that is anything that doesn't exist in a million other places out there. But the way that I approach it and apply it uh, and and proceed through it and then apply the tool is different. It's very much a differentiate. And that's back to the core point before of the difference between differentiation how you do what you do as opposed to what you do necessarily. But there are examples, and I guess that's kind of where I'll circle to True Chat. You know, people, it's funny because when people ask, well, how long have you been doing True Chat? Mm-hmm. It's kind of a, and I usually I'm honest with people and I tell them it's kind of, there's kind of two parts to it. I mean, that's the truth. It started as more of a hobby and something that, you know, I didn't start it to make money. That wasn't, I mean, mm-hmm. that's just the truth. True Chat didn't begin as a make money endeavor. I mean, that was great if that was a side benefit, but it was, I want to 
get into the radio space and mainly I want to broadcast sports events for my high school. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the truth. So seven years ago, you know, we start. Um, actually, now that we're in November, we're really close to that, you know, the actual day of the very first episode. Um and so, but then about three years ago or so is when it really kind of became the, all right, you know, are, am I serious about this or not? Is this is this something that I want to do every day? Um, is this something that fulfills me? And can I turn it into something that actually equals real live money, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's where that kind of, well, what are we going to offer? What are we going to do? Because up until then, it was create content. And there's lots of people that create content. Of course, the kind of content you create is where you differentiate yourself there. Mm -hmm. Um, So just saying you're a podcaster, you know, well, that's nice. What do you podcast about? Right. Right. Because there's a million things you could talk about. And so that wasn't so much it for us because I looked at it and said, well, there is that model, right, of you create unique content and you put advertising on it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you make money. Um, and that's the same for podcasting or, you know, TV or radio. I mean, that's basically right. what it all is, mm-hmm. is I have, I have something that you want to hear and I will sell part of my time to someone else so that you hear what they have to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, and so for me, it was, I want to do, I thought, you know, that's an option. Going that route can be done because it's proven that it works as long as you have content that's, you know, decent, uh, and you can promote it and you spend the money to promote it, you can successfully find advertisers yeah. for pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're out there. Right. And as podcasting has grown, it's become easier to do that. But that's where it came down to True Chat for this whole idea of when you approached us about, you know, what about doing a a business podcast right. and, and, and shaping that. It really led us to think about – and craft the idea of podcasting as a service, which there are other companies out there who, you know, if you want somebody to edit your podcast, yeah. you can find that. Right. If right. you want somebody to consult on what constitutes a good process, you can find that. Mm-hmm. And if you want somebody to promote your podcast, you can find that. Uh, but where we saw the opportunity was there wasn't anybody out there who said, Podcasting is a big, giant, scary thing to people who aren't, you know, who don't, their expertise is not in tech. It's not in advertising. It's not in content. Um, Their expertise is in X, you know, whatever. Um, Their expertise is in firefighting, you know. Uh, They don't know anything about podcasting. So that's where we saw the opportunity. Again, not really reinventing the wheel, just putting it all together and saying, well, we'll do the whole thing end to end for people yeah, uh, and simplify it, you know, so that it's less intimidating to people who said, well, I've thought about it, but it looks really complicated and difficult. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, let's stay on this topic for a little bit. Uh, topic around, is there a market? A uh, couple of questions we want to continue to drill down on. But we, before we do, we want to, we want, we really truly want you, Mr., Mrs., Ms., uh, listener <laughs> to get out there and join our discussion. Find, find True Chat on social media. We're at True Chat ORG. Um, reach out to me directly on Twitter. Reach out to Justin on Twitter directly. Find us on LinkedIn. In, but please uh, join our conversation. Uh, it makes it a whole lot more effective if you do. Um, but let's get back to it here. So uh, again, around is there a market? You know, you mentioned that when you're asked when True Chat started, you kind of see it as uh, two two distinctly different starting points, and that that's a real nice segue into another part of this overall question on is there a market, and that is that one of the things that you need to do is prove out your your market, your business, your product. There are any number of ways to do that. And why that's a perfect segment into this is because I also consider Plan Canvas to be at that sort of second, I'm, I, I call it launch 2.0, uh, where we are right now. So mm-hmm. in terms of proving and testing out the product, you know, we did that. We went through uh, a, a beta test period of about six months with about three dozen users who really were representative of the the end user community 
uh, that uh, that we wanted to attract to plan Canvas. And um, uh, we ran through, you know, various test scenarios and, and uh, I consulted directly with many of those participants in the in the beta test and we took the out come from that and took it back to the shop and, you know, made tweaks and, and that sort of thing. And, and we kind of got to the first launch. Um, but we fairly quickly entered into really what to me was sort of a second test period. And we're really still kind of in it. So we've got, you know, we went through that beta test and those were all volunteers and they were receiving free consulting services. Well, now we're at sort of this first round of where we've got people really using the tool, not because uh, they volunteered to use it, but because they're trying to get something out of it. Uh Um, And they uh, some have asked for consulting services, some have not. Uh, but it's out there now in a real live market test, right? And um, we're still kind of in that phase. And, you know, the, the tool continues to prove itself out as uh, something that, that is effective if you use it. Uh, we made a comparison last week, you know, a hammer is just a hammer until you pick it up and use it to drive a nail, right? And it's the same way, way with Plan Canvas or any other software you have to use it to get some value out of it. Sometimes you have to have some consulting services to get even more value out of it. But if you just have it, it's not going to do anything for you. And um, that's kind of where we are now is getting getting the, more of those success stories um, and continuing to find out how we can do things better and continuing to test it out. So can I ask cuz this is this and I know that obviously part of the struggle I think of any entrepreneur who is trying to do something, you know, quote unquote different. And we've already talked about how we can kind of separate terms out. But they want to they either want to spin something differently, you know, or or along the lines of true chat we're in a we're in an industry that's very young. Yeah, you know, podcasting by comparison to most other industries is very you know in its adolescence, if that. Um, even though it's been around since the early two thousands, you know, truthfully, it's been around since then. It's only really caught mainstream attention in the past five years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. When we, you know, after you had asked us this and we started to go into it, Mm -hmm. even today I've struggled to, you know, does anyone want it? Well, sure, people want a podcast, but do they want to pay someone else to help them do it? And that's been – it's difficult to answer, especially in a young market. So I just – I guess I'm curious about your perspective on how did you decide if people want – Plan Canvas. You know, how did you figure that out? Well, um, I don't know that I do have it figured out. Honestly, <laughs> it's I, ongoing. I, what, thing. what we have, yeah, what we have figured out is that using it, using it properly, will increase your results. All right, we've we've proven that out time and time again. Um, does anybody want it? Uh, that remains yet to be seen um, because, you know, quite frankly, the the uh, cost of conversion is pretty high right now. And I'm not sure sitting here at this moment in time where things will lead if it if it will blossom into uh, a tool that really is something that uh, is in the hip pocket of a consultant. And that's how you get the most value out of it. Uh, or will it, will it be something that stands alone that, uh, someone can go subscribe to because they want to and they need it and they can pick it up and use it readily, uh, effectively right out of the gate? I don't know. And another, another direction that we're heading, um, is, uh, and it's another one of those kind of differentiator things. But I've I've teamed up with a couple of PhDs, and we are developing uh, a, a course on entrepreneurial leadership, uh, in which the the software kind of sits in the middle as the technology that would be used to deliver assignments and and things like that through the course. But we consciously made a decision that 
we're never even going to say, okay, uh, hey, now it's time for you to go develop a strategic plan. Now it's time for you to go develop a business plan. And instead, we're taking a totally unique approach to it and we're saying, okay, now it's time to do this. And after that, we're going to have you go do this other thing. And then at the end, hey, guess what you did? You created a business plan. Did you know you were creating a business plan? Right. And without ever saying go create a business plan. So it's a completely different view. Um, but that's all in an educational, uh, educational lane. And, uh, you know, and we're looking at higher education. We're looking at corporate training and we're looking at individual, uh, based training, you know, that can be delivered over the web. So, you know, Plan Canvas may, may for the foreseeable future be in that lane and be in the consulting lane. And the original lane that we envisioned was, hey, let's just put a tool out there that anyone can go use and get some value out of. That may prove to not be a great market. I I just don't know right now. Yep. Well, that's it's funny because I think it's always part of the journey. As much as we can research and, you know, think about what the answers to these questions are so often, it becomes at some point – you know, you got to have, you know, you got to have a prototype, you got to have a beta test, you got to, in True Chat's case, right, you just have to, you have to come up with something that you call the product or the service and go try to get people to use it um, to find out. Because, you know, even some well-researched things, uh, there's been an infinite number of massive product fails that companies put a ton of money and time into, you know, and they thought it would be great and they put it out there and the consumers just hated it. You yeah. know, it just, mm-hmm. Or <laughs> ignored it. Yeah. Right. Or, or, yeah, or they just <laughs> didn't care at all. Yeah. Um, they either bought it and they, you know, they, they thought it was something it wasn't um, or they just never wanted it in the first place. Uh, so it's definitely a it's been interesting because, you know, we started out with, well, podcasting is something that anybody could make use of. And while I think that's still true, it becomes, well, but what are we going to spend our money on? Who are we going to go try to talk to? Who is it best situated for? Um, And that's where over, you know, this kind of year and a half of really having it better to find what it is we offer, studying and figuring out who does it work well for? Um, and learning that nonprofits and people like John, you know, influencers or people who have a need to influence are best situated to want to pay money to do a podcast, you know, um, where people who are a car salesman, you know, could they benefit from doing a podcast? Probably. But how do we materialize that in a way that they care about? I mean, I don't know. And yeah. do I have time and money to spend on that? You know, that's right. Well, that's the thing, and, it, and that's why uh, one of the previous questions from the from uh, the 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 first episode on this topic is really important, and that's you know uh, how dedicated are you to it? Uh, you know, if if I were brewing a beer, as an example, uh, I could hold that beer up, pour it in a glass, let you taste it, and you immediately get whether you want that beer or not. Right? The stuff that we do is different. Uh, it is a much longer cycle to test out uh, viability um, and, you know, with both True Chat and Plan Canvas and, and I'm sure for the businesses that many of our listeners are thinking of or have started, that test period is a lot longer and yes. you've got to have a lot of grit and stick with itness and believe belief in what you're doing or you'll just say, oh, I'm tired, I'm done. You know, so it's a it, it can be a long, long schlep. There's no magic, um, magic time frame to any of this. It's just how much can you stomach? How much does uh, does your your business need? And there's a lot of. Yeah, like you said, it is grit because it's there's a lot of people are going to say things not to be mean, but that are going to offend you because because it's the thing that you've put all of your creative energy into and all of your passion into. And so when people say, I don't want it, you know, um, I, you know, it'd be nice to say that it's easy to just shrug that off and move on. Um, but you know, it gets easier, I think, as you go. Uh, but it is, you're right. It's longer. You know, you can't, we can't take 50 samples of beer out to people and say, you know, taste this. And if 
25 of them say they like it, we know we got something. You know, it's not quite – it's not to say that creating, you know, a craft beer is easy. I mean, I couldn't create a decent craft beer if I wanted to. So, you right. know. But testing it is easy. Right. But testing it's easy. So it's all a matter of, you know. Yeah. It's all a matter of where the work comes into play. Yeah. 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 So, uh, hey, uh, let's uh, again remind listeners that all the podcasts on the True Chat Network pursue a common goal. True Chat's mission is to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. If you have any ethical concerns with today's episode, please email ethics at truechat.org. Again, that's ethics at T-R-U-E-C-H-A-T dot org. We're talking about how to determine if your business or product is viable, and we're continuing a conversation from an earlier podcast podcast in which we covered some questions, three major questions that are really specific to you, the individual. Um, And one of those questions is what type of entrepreneur are you, which feeds in directly to this next sub question uh, of the major question that we're talking about right now. Is there a market? And that is how much will anyone pay for your product? And the reason that uh, that question about what type of entrepreneur are you is so important is because it's going to it's going to play a factor. It's going to it's going to be a factor in how you price whatever it is you're you're doing. Right. Uh, It it could have a tremendous impact. So you got to know what type of entrepreneur entrepreneur you are when you're starting to think about pricing for your for your product or service. But otherwise, uh, around pricing, um, you know, the most common approach, I think, to uh, anyone determining what their pricing ought to be is to do a little market research. You know, get out there, understand your competitors, your peers, uh, what else is happening out in the market, uh, what kind of trends are you seeing, the size of the market, the demand, uh, all of those things play into it, but you've got to get out there and do some homework on your market. Absolutely. Uh, and and to the extent that it's available, depending on what you're doing. Um, you know, I think, as John had highlighted before, some of it is you'll discover uh, where your market is, which lets you do a little bit better research. You know, maybe you think it's X and it's actually Y. Um, and as you start to do it, you kind of begin to realize, well, my market's not what I thought it was. So now I have to, again, go back. It's that ongoing process. When when John has said that, you know, a business plan is a living document, um, it, it, it has to be, be or it should be <laughs> because uh, there is that. You got to go back and visit it again and you have to. You have to think about it again, um, and you have to do the research again because it things change, um, both with your business and your idea, and um, and also the market itself. You know what people wanted uh, when the I- iPad came out is not what they want today. Um, the iPad sales have been a, a sore point for Apple for a long time now because it's like, what am I going to do with this? You know, it's it it not really can it replace my laptop fully, but at the same time, it's nice to have the bigger screen than a phone. But is it worth, you know, is it worth the money for me? So it's in that weird area of when it came out, it was new. So it's, mm-hmm. I want it because it's new. Right. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Right. You know, I mean, it does for some, I'm sure, but it doesn't work with the broad market. Right. So it's a, they're having to reassess and think about, well, what are we going to do if this is going to continue to be a product for us? Yep. And it's the same thing for any organization. Yep, absolutely. And that kind of leads us to another uh, major sex or major question uh, within this within this general topic about the market. And that is, is the market accessible? So it's great. You've got this product and, and you know it's going to work. You've tested it. And you, you know what the pricing is. But can you even get to that market? So first, have you defined and quantified it? But second, uh, are there barriers? You know, there might be regulatory barriers out there. Uh, there might be protections. You might have agreements with previous employers or other uh, business owners uh, that preclude you from entering into those markets for certain periods of time. So you've got to be careful about that kind of stuff. Is there a high cost to entering into a particular market? You know, you talk about some of the uh, tech technology oh, yeah. uh, that, you know, um, that you were just talking about. You know, there's a high cost to inventing uh, the next smartphone. Uh, and so can you do that uh, in your garage? Maybe, but uh, it's a question you have to answer. <laughs> right, yeah. You got to know, 
Um, you know, it's great. I've got the plan. I, I know that people want it, but is it realistic for me to get it to people? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, can I, because if you're thinking about a smartphone, right, well, maybe I can build it, but if I have to buy each component and I can't get wholesale pricing and this phone costs $4,000, right? I, you know, is anybody going to buy it even if they want it? Yeah. Because they can't afford it. So, right. it, and that it's, I think the good part of this and where we're, you know, leading up to here as we wrap things up is that they all fold into each other. Yeah. They're very important to one another. This whole process is, which is why it all goes under this same heading, uh, because it is a question of not just, you know, do people want it and will they pay for it? Right. Uh, but can you do it at a price people will pay for it? Uh, yeah. And, and you know, what costs are there that you haven't thought of? Right. Um, Yep. We we ran into many of those, you know. Yeah, I was like, well, podcasting it can't cost that much, and then <laughs> right. you know, just sit in front of a mic and record it, <laughs> put it right. up on the internet. Uh, <laughs> but then we learned that you know, people who are going to pay what we ask for these services, most of them mm-hmm. expect a very professional appearance yeah. uh, and presentation, you know, and there's costs with that, right? Um, you, you can't just have, you know, uh, a garage with three mics in it. Mm-hmm. People probably aren't going to pay the kind of money we're asking. Right. Um, because they're going to feel like, well, what am I paying for? You know, yep. seeing is believing kind of thing. And I'm sure you face some of that in consulting with, you know, it costs what? A- and what are you going to give me for that? You right. know, because mm-hmm. if you're selling a car, it's a lot easier to say it's worth 20000 Yeah, know, it's, right. People don't question that as much, right. but you you know you go up to them and say I cost whatever you know right. three hundred dollars an hour. They're gonna well, what justifies that? Right. You know, mm-hmm. um, yep. what do I get for that? Yep, yep. So uh, accessibility to the market uh, is a big one. Um, let's go one more question in this broad category about your market because it's a good segue into what's going to end up being our next episode in this series uh, where we start talking about your business model. But we'll wrap up uh, around the subject of your market with this final question, and that is do you have a go-to market strategy? So things that you need to consider – uh, are things like, do you have influencers? You know, do you have people out there that will, um, it's basically free advertising, right? If you have the right people talking the right way about your product at the right time, that's an influencer and it can have a big impact on uh, your go-to-market strategy. But you also have to think more tactically Fully, right? Like, or tactically, uh, <laughs> tactfully, tactic, tactfully, tactically. Uh, <laughs> where are you going to sell this thing? Who's going to sell it? How are you going to collect revenue? Right? Uh, I mean, that's the whole point. Yep. You, know, you need to make some money. So, how are you going to actually collect that revenue? And who, uh, how will you provide support once once people have, especially if it's a product? So, if they have your product, how are you going to provide support for it? So, these are just some of the questions that uh, you need to be thinking about uh, when you're putting together your go to market strategy. And, and it also includes additional questions like, you know, how are you positioning? Uh, your product or service, uh, what is the messaging that goes with it? Uh, uh, you know, how are you going to be um, uh, promoting it? You know, all of those sorts of things go around uh, your go-to-market strategy. But if you don't have a go-to-market strategy, uh, you're you're in deep doo-doo, right? Absolutely. It's uh, you got to have at least some you know semblance of. What now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got it. I know people will pay for it. I know it's great. And now I got to sell it somehow. Yeah. So I got to get it to people. Right. Um, and how is that going to happen? Right. And, and it doesn't have to be a great go to market strategy. You know, uh, I've talked about on, on, on businesses art in the past how, you know, as we were developing Plan Canvas, bootstrapping it, budget's tight. You know, we're doing everything we can to develop and test out. The product, uh, you know, there's no extra funding to uh, to develop a real detailed, you know, effective go to market strategy that began to come later and is still evolving. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone's situation is different. Just don't go into it with absolutely no idea what you're doing. 
Most of us are not the Microsofts of the world who, you know, pay a team of 100 people or more just to do research and development. Right. <laughs> but most people don't have those kinds of resources. Right. So it's uh, me, myself, and I, you mm-hmm. know, I am R&D and I am operations and I am delivery. So mm-hmm. it's, you know. I'm I'm the whole process all in one, yep. um, and I and I don't. Not only do I not have the time, but I don't have the money uh, to pay other people to you know do all the research for me. So yep. it, it's not going to be perfect, and that's I know I can speak to that's been a pain point for me for uh, pretty much the whole time I've been doing True Chat. And I think anybody who has a passion for something is you want it to be perfect, right? And at some point, you just got to, you know, you just got to put it out there. Yep. You just got to go with it because you can spend a lifetime yep. and never have it perfect. Yep. That's right. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to go. Yep. So uh, speaking of go, we're going to go uh, now on this, uh, <laughs> this episode. We're going to wrap John's segways. Yeah. They're the best. We're going to wrap <laughs> We're going to wrap this one up and uh, we will come back with a follow up episode because what we've talked about so far, questions about you and questions about your market. We have yet to cover questions that you need to ask and answer for yourself about your business model. So just a recap, uh, the questions about you uh, on a previous episode were what type of entrepreneur are you? Our business and personal vision, mission, and purpose in harmony, and how dedicated are you? Then the questions that we just covered in this particular episode over your market are, is there a market? Is it accessible? And do you have a go-to-market strategy? So that's where we are in, in this process so far. Anything else you'd like to close with, Justin? I don't think so. I'm excited for the next part. I told you, I've been, the whole process has been most enjoyable. Oh, shameless plug. Uh, yeah. All your listeners have to have to tune in to The State of Us on other podcasts on oh, True yeah. Chat because the famous John Umstead yeah. is uh, is guest starring. So <laughs> Guest starring. Well, I'm just sitting in the guest seat. How about that? <laughs> okay. So, all right. We're putting the pressure on him. Everybody right. tune in. <laughs> yeah. So looking forward to that. And um, uh, yeah, please tune in to, to both shows uh, or all of the True Chat shows, by yeah, the way. So, why not? And you know what? Hey, you can listen to them on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, anywhere fine podcasts are found. There's another great segue. I know. Uh, I, it's on point. You, you're definitely <laughs> the best host we have at, at smooth segue. Except I usually like, like to point out that, hey, wasn't that a great segue? Yeah, right. And then, <laughs> if I was the, really great, I wouldn't have to say anything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, okay, well, we pointed out the same way. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Look yep. at me. Look at me. Uh, all right, folks. Hey, for Businesses Art on True Chat, I'm your host, John Umstead. Again, sitting in the guest seat is Justin T. Weller. Justin, thanks again for sitting in. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you all very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Businesses Art. Be the change. <laughs>